What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, we're going to be talking all about common weight loss mistakes. I'm going to take you through eight different mistakes I see people making all the time that is putting a huge hindrance on reaching their fitness goals. I do want to put out as a little disclaimer that being in shape and achieving abs and reaching your physical physique goals is amazing and it's a great thing, but it's not everything. And that might sound really weird coming from somebody who is a health and fitness blogger, a personal trainer, someone who has had their own physical transformation. Um, but although I think physical transformations are so important and they are so powerful and they can change every area of your life, not just your body. We live in a generation where people, specifically women, are very obsessed with reaching a certain body fat percentage or looking like a certain someone or just feeling like they're not adequate unless they weigh a certain amount or look a certain way. So I just wanna say that weight loss and fat loss is not the most important thing in the world. However, I wanted to make this video because there are some people who do truly need to lose weight or lose fat in order to actually be healthy. And again, aside from the physical aspect of losing weight and looking great, um, losing weight and changing my physique didn't only change my body, but it really did truly change many other aspects of my life. So I am very passionate about physical transformations, but I do, of course, again, want to put out as a disclaimer that you don't have to look a certain way in order to look good or be worthy or adequate. You don't have to have abs. You don't have to be at a certain body fat percentage or anything like that. So I don't want you to get the wrong idea from this video or any other videos that I put out. So again, of course, I love fitness and I love health, but the most important thing is just being happy and confident and healthy. But of course, I do believe in taking care of ourselves and sometimes, again, people need to lose a little bit of weight or lose a little bit of fat in order for them to live a healthier lifestyle. So that is why I am making this video. There are so many misconceptions out there. There are so many gimmicks and so many ads and so many companies putting out false information so that you'll buy their products. And so again, I just wanted to make this to really clear things up and really share with you the biggest things that you may be doing that are truly putting a hindrance on your results and um, getting you towards your goals. So with all that being said, before we hop into the tips, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps support my channel and also remember to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And with that, let's get into the first mistake. So the first common mistake is that people think there are good and bad foods. Now, there are good and bad foods when it comes to what's actually healthy and good for our insides. But when it specifically comes to weight loss, there are no good or bad foods. The reason that I say that is because obviously all food contains calories. Your body cannot tell the difference between calories from a banana and calories from a Pop-Tart. The only thing, again, as far as weight loss or fat loss goes, is your body recognizing calories in versus calories out. Again, I do wanna make it very clear that your body knows the difference between a banana and a Pop-Tart health-wise. But again, we're just talking specifically weight loss right now. So there are definitely no foods that cause weight gain and there are no foods that cause weight loss. Again, it's just calories in versus calories out. So many of you know I've tracked macros for about four years now. It's something that I'm really passionate about because I feel like it's the first and only diet ever created or discovered where you are able to reach your fitness goals, lose weight, lose fat without restricting yourself from any foods or any food groups. So if you're not familiar with what macros is, macros is your carbs, your fats, and your proteins, which all add up to your calories. So I won't get in depth on macros in this video. As many of you know, I do have a guide to tracking macros ebook that I will link below if you are interested. It goes through what macros are, how to track them, what your numbers should be based on your body and your goals, etc. my favorite macro-friendly recipes. So again, with macros, when you really understand that it's all about how many proteins, fats, carbs, calories you're putting in your body every day versus how many, how many calories you're actually burning every single day. So in order to lose fat or lose weight, you have to be consuming less calories per day than you are burning. Um, and you wanna just be a little bit under that number. I mean, you don't wanna be like, oh, that must mean that I should only eat, you know, a thousand calories per day. You only wanna be a little bit below how much you're burning so that you are staying healthy. So again, people think that there are bad foods and they avoid them because they don't wanna gain weight, when again, in reality, 
it doesn't matter what the food is, that is not going to cause the weight gain. It's just if you are consuming more calories on a daily basis than you are burning. That is the only thing that actually causes weight gain over time. So when adults say, oh, it's harder for adults to lose weight or you know, my metabolism is slowed down, although that is true to an extent, what it really is, it's the compound effect over the years. It's every single year, or every single day or every single week, you were slightly above your maintenance calories and your maintenance calories are just how many calories you need to consume every single day in order to not neither lose nor gain weight. So again, if you are slightly eating more calories than you're burning every single day, a little bit every week, like doing that for a couple weeks, you're not really gonna look that different, but when you do it for a year, five years, 10 years, it starts to compound. Therefore, that's why most adults think that Oh, well, I haven't really changed my eating habits that much over the years, but I've gained so much weight. It's just, again, because it's compounded over the months and over the years, therefore causing them to gain quite a bit of weight. This also goes for healthy foods. So I think a lot of times people think, oh, well, avocados are healthy, bananas are healthy, cashews are healthy. And although that's true, if you are eating too much of that food, going back to what I was saying before, it's still calories. And if you are consuming more calories than you're burning, those calories are going to get stored as fat. So even though they're healthy foods, they're still gonna get stored as fat and it's going to hinder your progress. That is why I do truly believe in tracking macros and the power of learning about portion sizes and what you're putting in your body on a daily basis. So although I know tracking macros is not for everybody, I do think it's a great thing to do at least temporarily for a month or so because some people are just absolutely blown away by the amount of food they're eating or maybe about how much protein they're not consuming that they thought they were. It's just, again, a really good learning experience. I talk about this in so many of my videos, but it's because I believe in it so strongly. The second mistake I see all the time is people depriving themselves from certain foods or certain food groups. So we kind of touch on this in the last subject, but again, you don't have to be cutting out specific foods or cutting out carbs or anything of that nature to lose weight. Again, it's just calories in versus calories out. Plus, when you are restricting yourself from certain foods or food groups like carbs, you aren't setting yourself up for success because it's not sustainable. The whole goal with your fitness journey or your weight loss journey should be how to make it a lifestyle and how to make it something that you can actually stick to for the rest of your life. And so if you're cutting out major things in your diet, that's not sustainable and it also can lead to binging and cravings and it's just really a vicious cycle. The third mistake I see all of the time is people under eating. They just think, well, if I eat less, I won't gain weight or I'll lose weight, which might even still seem true based on the first point that I had saying calories in versus calories out. But if you're going too far below what your maintenance calories are or you're consuming too little food based on what you're burning every single day, your body, I don't wanna use the term starvation mode because that's not technically what it is, but your body is gonna start to hold on to all of the food that you give it because it doesn't know when it's going to get more food. Not to mention, if you're not consuming enough food or enough calories, your body is going to start depleting muscle and when you don't have muscle, it's much harder to lose fat. So a lot of times people think, oh, I don't wanna gain muscle, I just wanna lose weight, right? Or I, was, I wanna get toned, I don't want muscle. But in order to look toned, you have to have muscle definition with low body fat percentage. That's exactly what being toned is. And so also the more muscle that you have, the easier it is for your body to burn fat or to be in a fat burning mode. So if you aren't consuming enough calories, your body is getting deprived from protein and the nutrients that it needs to build muscle in order for you to actually lose weight. So even though it might seem like not eating a lot of food is beneficial, it's actually the total opposite. It can really, really hinder your weight loss. Not to mention the negative effects it can have on your health, your hormones, your gut health, your brain health. I mean, you just, you don't wanna under eat. We need food as fuel and for our body to function properly. So that is a huge one. Um, make sure you are not under eating and always eat if you are hungry. The fourth huge mistake that I see people making all the time, which can be really challenging for some people, is that they're consuming too much alcohol, alcoholic beverages. So 
I'm someone who I know it's a little bit easier for me to say than someone else because I personally don't really enjoy drinking and I know that a lot of people love their glass of wine or they love just like you know going out and drinking with friends or family and it's a social thing and so I get it you know I get that it can be hard to cut back on and you don't want to be the only one not drinking but alcohol is considered empty calories which means it counts towards your calorie intake every single day but it's neither a protein a fat or a carb so it's completely again an empty calorie alcohol also depletes your muscle like we were just talking about and you really need muscle no matter what your health and fitness goals are i could do an entire video on why alcohol really interferes with our weight loss and our fat loss and our overall health goals um but i won't go too in depth in this video though i'm not telling you to never have a drink or never have a glass of wine or anything like that um, but if you can just try to cut it back, that is going to help you so, so much. And you can have drinks that don't contain sugar, or if you can choose red wine over a mixed drink, or just really watching what's actually in the drink is key. With some alcoholic drinks, not, are, not only are you getting the empty calories and the negative effects from the alcohol, but then you're adding sugar and other ingredients on top of it that are adding to your calories and it's just not good. So the fifth mistake that I see is that people go into the gym and they don't have a plan. So this totally used to be me back in the day when I first started my fitness journey. I would go to the gym and then I would just end up walking on an incline on the treadmill or jogging because I simply didn't know what to do. And I feel like that's a big reason as to why people think they're unmotivated to go to the gym or to work out. It's just because they're not confident and they don't know what they're doing. Obviously, if you're not confident with a plan, you're not going to want to go. So if you can temporarily afford to hire a trainer in person, that's a great way to not only learn, but help hold you accountable to go to the gym, or you can purchase online programs. I have a few of my own. Everything will be linked in the description. But if you can come up with some kind of plan, even if that's just going on YouTube, watching my free videos here on my channel, on my Instagram, I have tons and tons of free workouts, so you don't actually have to purchase a real program. You can educate yourself through just watching people's videos, reading articles, studying workouts, studying personal trainers online, etc. The sixth mistake I see all the time is not staying hydrated enough. So we hear it in every health related video that we need to be drinking more water. My general rule of thumb is to try to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. And I personally say that as a minimum. If you can do more than that, that's great. Um, if you're not even anywhere close to drinking that much per day, then you don't need to set that as your first goal. Just have it as a goal to have, you know, a big water bottle that you carry around every day and drink the whole thing. You know, whatever it is for you, if it, you just need to do baby steps, that's okay. Um, but consuming more water is not only going to make everything flow smoothly in your body, it's gonna make your metabolism better, it's gonna make your digestion better. But it's also really interesting because oftentimes when we think we're hungry, if we drink a big glass of water, the hunger magically goes away. And it's not because it filled us up, but it's because sometimes when we're dehydrated, it can show up as hunger. So if you think you're hungry, but you recently ate or you feel like you probably shouldn't be hungry, drink a big glass of water and see how you feel after that because it can really make a big difference. Water is a whole nother topic I could go on for 10 minutes about, but there's so many importances to drinking water for your weight loss, fitness, and health goals. So be sure you are drinking enough water. The seventh mistake is the training styles that people are performing. So if your goal is specifically fat loss or weight loss or muscle building, you should be focusing mainly on resistance training, weight training, and high intensity interval training. With weight training and high intensity interval training, you actually burn calories not only while you're doing the workout, but for the rest of the day until you go to bed. If you're on a treadmill and you're jogging for 20, 30 minutes, you're only burning calories while you are on the machine. So not only are weightlifting and high intensity interval trainings more effective at burning calories, but those styles of workout help to build muscle, which again, no matter what your weight loss or fitness goals are, you want muscle, it's only going to help you. And doing endless amounts of cardio every single week, whether it's four, five, six days a week on some kind of a machine, you are depleting your muscle. And if you've ever heard of the term skinny fat, I hate to use that term, but it's the best way to describe it. And I think a lot of people know what that is, where someone appears to be thin, 
but they just have no muscles. So everything just looks kind of flabby. Um, and, and that can definitely occur from too much cardio. So although like you look thin in clothes, you might not be super confident in a bathing suit because you just have absolutely no muscle definition or curves or any type of shape. So again, I can't stress the importance enough of weight training, resistance training. Do not be afraid of the weights. They are going to be what help you reach your goals. Now, if you are someone that loves yoga or you love workout classes, you love spin classes, I'm not saying not to do them. If that is the type of workout you enjoy, that is amazing. Any movement is good movement. I'm just saying specifically for goals regarding weight loss, you're going to want to do some form of resistance training and high intensity interval training. The last and final mistake is a really, really big one. And this is that people are not consuming enough protein in their diet. So this also comes back to building muscle. We need muscle in order to reach any of our fitness goals. Most people are getting a majority of their calories every single day from fats and carbs. Now, I'm not saying to cut fats and carbs out. You already know that from earlier in the video, but more of our calories should be coming from protein because that is what's going to help us to build that muscle. I'm not saying to cut out carbs or cut out fat, but just focus more on getting higher protein, maybe a little bit less fats and carbs, and just getting a good source of protein at every single meal. So those are all of the most common mistakes that I see. Of course, there are other things um, that I could talk about. Maybe I'll do another version of this video, but these are really the biggest hindrances that I see. So. I really, really hope this was helpful for you guys. Remember to hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. And please, please comment below if you have any further questions or anything that I did not talk about in this video. I really want this to be as helpful and as informative as possible. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.